I'm Steve and welcome to another episode of Research Design Build. So in today's episode we're going to be tackling a uh, oil leak on my 2011 Chevy Silverado uh, 2500. Uh, it is a gas motor so it's got the 6 liter uh, V8 in it and it's four wheel drive and this is going to be the front uh, passenger side or front right uh, output shaft seal replacement. So hopefully it goes smoothly today and uh, I can go on my road trip uh, tomorrow with the truck. If you haven't been to the channel before, welcome. Uh, I cover a variety of content, uh, did a full basement remodel and covered every step involved in that. So if you're doing home renovation, uh, I am sure that there's going to be some uh, videos there to help you out. Also do some automotive content and 3D printing. Now we've just hit a uh, big milestone. I've uh, been doing YouTube for about uh, a year now as far as uh, uploading fairly regularly and uh, just hit 500 subscribers. So uh, thank you for everyone that subscribed, much appreciated. Uh, halfway there to monetization and uh, there's uh, been, uh, you know, just a great viewership uh, over the last year. Uh, right now I'm doing probably 20,000 views a month and uh, about a thousand watch hours, so that's fantastic. Uh, just need to get it up to a thousand and then, uh, or a thousand subscribers, and uh, then uh, I can get, uh, get monetized and uh, actually uh, help pay for some of this content and gear. Um, but in celebration of the 500 subscriber, I did uh, fork out a little bit of money and got myself a wireless mic. So hopefully the audio on my videos going forward is a little bit a little step higher than it has been in the past uh, if you notice a difference uh, please leave a comment below that would be much appreciated so i did spare you guys the overwhelming excitement uh, of uh, putting the truck up on jack stands and removing the tire uh, not necessary if you're using a lift but it does give you a lot more light and uh, makes it a little bit easier to work on so this is where the seal is right here and some of this is just spray from uh, some penetrating oil that I put on last night but uh, this drip right here is the oil that is coming out so that is what we're trying to fix. So in order to do that we're going to remove these 12 volts, I believe there's 12 volts here and uh, then we'll be able to move this axle out of the way. And then this guy right here is kind of like a stub shaft off of the uh, main pumpkin there. And that is going to be removable as well. So looking right through there, then there are a few holes right, or a few bolts right around that uh, actuator for the four wheel drive that we'll be able to undo. And then that section should come out. I have already disconnected the half shaft, so there's actually only eight bolts. I thought there was uh, more than that, but eight bolts there. And then I have also removed the skid plate. And now we have a much better view of kind of what we're looking at. So this is the piece here that we're trying to remove. So I'll have to unplug this sensor under these bolts, these bolts on this side, and then this piece should come out. So then there's two bolts on this side that uh, will allow this to, to come out. All right, so we got it out. Um, now I will give you a couple of tips that uh, helped me up or helped me out. So when undoing these bolts here, um, I needed to jack up the pumpkin, uh, like the main diff just a little bit to get the alignment back straight because uh, this was starting to sort of droop and these top bolts uh, it was putting a lot of stress on so they're hard to come out so I jacked up the uh, center diff just a little bit to get the gap sort of top and bottom uh, straight and then the bolts came out easy so that's the first tip and then these two bolts they go here uh, that secure this half on. I ended those and then that allows it to droop down. Now I still wasn't able to get enough clearance 
but what I was able to do was I turned full lock to the right and then I lifted this the half shaft up as high as I could and just put a ratchet strap here to sort of that top uh, top arm on the suspension and that was enough to get this above above the piece we were trying to remove and then that gave me enough room to slide it out towards the right and off the gears that are still there on the center diff. Hey guys, so here we are looking at the part that attaches to the main pumpkin there. And there's this split ring that is right down at the bottom of this gear, but on top of that washer that you see down there. Now, this is something that changed in, I believe, 2009, but uh, there's probably some mechanics there on here that can, uh, can correct me. Mine's a 2011. Now, the earlier ones uh, had a ring down there, but it was one that you could just sort of beat this shaft out of there and it would come out. And that's what a lot of the YouTube videos show were 2000 and some, well, you know, 2006s. Um, and they all look almost identical to this, except for this little guy here. So it is a pain in the arse to get out. Um, but I used a combination of uh, some snap ring pliers and a little hook guy like this to uh, pop it out of place and then walk it up the gear. But this needs to come out absolutely before you start trying to get the axle out or else you'll end up bending this washer and causing yourself all sorts of other trouble. So um, if you got a newer truck, watch out for this guy. So guys, at uh, first when I pulled out the shaft, I was a little uh, confused because this is the seal that I got and that is what I was looking at. And those did not look at all the same. But what I realized was that this was actually down on here with this guy that had kind of separated off the back side of it. And uh, so my seal, when I pulled it apart, um, completely separated from the, uh, or completely separated, leaving half of it on the shaft and uh, half of it in the housing, uh, which confused me for a minute. So I had to sort of pry around and get the other half of the seal off the shaft. So um, don't uh, panic like I did thinking you got the wrong seal. If it doesn't look the same, uh, maybe your seal just uh, sort of blew apart like mine did. Oh, I did manage to get the other half of the seal out of the housing and uh, it didn't come out easy. But to give you guys, uh, mine was pretty dirty so I didn't realize it at first, but there is a little bit of a lip on the seal that seats down right on this guy. So this lip here sits here. So you can go in with the chisel, separate those and then start hitting this edge up or out and just work your way around and mine eventually came out. So a um, bit of a pain, you wanna make sure you're not hitting this uh, surface here, right? Um, but uh, you know, once you got in there with a sharp chisel and uh, started beating away at this edge, then uh, I was able to inch this guy out little bit by little bit, but uh, seeing as it's probably been in there since uh, 2011, um, you know, been in there 10 years now. It uh, it was happy there, it didn't want to come out, but uh, we got it out. I got everything cleaned up here and I've got the seal reinstalled. Now I didn't have a seal pusher or anything like that, uh, but just put a cloth kind of over top and tapped that guy down with a dead blow, just working slowly around the edge until I was able to get that seated right down there at the bottom in the, to the housing. Now you'll notice that I didn't clean everything and that is because there is a bearing down in there, a little needle 
uh, roller bearing and I did want to make sure that the inside surface was clean and free of debris um, but I didn't go around cleaning the outside of the housing because I didn't want to get any of that dirt from outside in so uh, this is a, a, a careful balance between uh, cleaning enough to make sure that the parts you're assembling are clean but not cleaning so much that you're accidentally actually introducing dirt into uh, bearings and the other parts now that stub shaft there, I was able to fully clean um, because uh, there weren't any bearings or anything that I was going to potentially wash dirt into. So I was able to get that real clean and good to go. Now the next steps here will be to lube these up with the 75W90 as well as the seal. And uh, then I can slide these two components together. Uh, but uh, do make sure you get quite a bit of uh, lubricant on there so you don't uh, accidentally cut that brand new seal. With everything cleaned and lubed up, we're ready to slide the housing over the shaft. Now it's pretty loose fit here and everything goes good, but once you get to the end here, this is where you're getting sort of that size on size fit, both with the seal and with that needle bearing. So. You gotta be careful, just apply some pressure, uh, some gentle rotation, and uh, you should be able to get that to sit down nicely. And I'm just taking my time here to make sure that I don't uh, nick the seal or uh, don't damage that bearing, but there you go. It's now seated all the way down. Now uh, you can install that uh, sort of washer there at the top that has the two tangs on it. And then we're moving on to getting that C-clip uh, in there. So now we got the washer in there and the C-clip. So uh, there it is, it's seated down and you just gotta make sure that it is in that retaining groove. And next up is the sort of the gear assembly and the fork. And then this is what actually actuates your four wheel drive. And so you just, after you get that cleaned up, then you can slide to that into position. And then you get the spring. So that sits there. Now everything's sitting there. And then don't forget uh, that one little washer there. Uh, so that washer is key. This guy reinstalled, I get the six bolts in. Um, now, if you have the newer version like I do, um, it's got a gasket in there. Whereas the old ones uh, use just sealant in there. Now I have put some sealant in there, just a thin, thin coat um, on both sides of the gasket. Uh, one of the e main reasons I do that is uh, then I can actually stick the gasket to the part. And then during assembly, I'm not trying to wrestle a gasket that wants to fall off at the same time as trying to get all the bolts in and that sort of thing. So a little bit of a trick there. And if there are any nicks or anything, any small marks on the gasket, um, you know, a little bit of seal uh, of the sealant will uh, will fix up that gasket as well. And then uh, on this side, I have let the half shaft down. Um, remember, we had it sort of tied up out of the way. And then uh, I'm going to throw in these two bolts or nuts, I guess, for the uh, supports. For this guy and pull that up and make sure that this goes up at the same time. So I just finished up and just took it for a little test drive and everything was looking good and I can get in and out of four wheel drive so I think we're uh, good to go. So here are all the tools that I used so if you want a, a full tool list um, I will try to uh, put it in the description below but uh, starting off the right hand side we've got uh, impact gun just speeds things up big time. Uh, a variety of extensions to get into the different places, both uh, 3 8 and half inch. And then uh, sockets. So uh, lug nuts for me are 7 8 of an inch. And then uh, the two bolts that support the, the piece that we're removing there, that uh, sort of uh, axle shaft or whatever, the, the uh, short axle. Uh, that guy is a 22 millimeter, and then I've got three different 15 millimeter sockets. Just uh, there's a couple of the sockets that, uh, or a couple of the 
bolt that the impact 15 is a little bit uh, too thick for. So a, uh, the regular one works a little bit better. I got a couple swivel extensions to uh, make it easier to get in and then a 15 millimeter wrench. Uh, of course, a torque wrench to get uh, mainly the tires uh, torqued back to spec and a breaker bar to break those loose as well as uh, some of the other bolts underneath the chassis were uh, quite tight. So using the breaker bar made things a lot easier. Again, I'm lying on my back on the garage. I don't have a lift. So uh, leverage is uh, sometimes your friend for those awkward situations. Uh, ratchet. So we got half inch and three eighths ratchet. And then a variety of screwdrivers and pry bars. Uh, this is mainly to uh, get the seal itself off. Uh, a pair of snap ring pliers there over on the far left uh, with a 90 degree uh, tip bend on it. And that allowed me to get that uh, pesky snap ring out of there, as well as sort of that dental pick uh, that you see sort of right underneath it. Once I had that out, I used the uh, oversized uh, puller, bearing puller, uh, just put a little bit of pressure on the shaft and sort of sneak it off of the uh, bearing and seal uh, rather than uh, tapping it or hitting it like some of the other guys do. This is a little gentler, smoother, and uh, make sure we don't damage any of those uh, bearings. Got some uh, sort of all-purpose uh, gasket make it maker sealer. And again, I used that to attach the gasket um, just so that it wasn't moving around as I was trying to get everything in place. Uh, dead blow mallet, that was helpful on a couple of occasions for some stubborn bolts. And then I've got a uh, mini sledge and a chisel. Um, and that is what I use to, uh, to bust that seal out of there. As I told you earlier, that was a real pain in the butt. Uh, and then brake clean and paper towel. As far as parts, um, AC Delco uh, 75W90 synthetic is what uh, is recommended for the diffs. Um, and it takes almost two liters, so two of these. Uh, and if you're like me and you spill some on the ground, uh, you'll need to pick up three of them. Uh, and then the actual seal is this guy here. It's an AC Delco seal. And uh, the AC Delco part number is 2319-6678. And that is the same as the GM part number. Uh, this was about $100 Canadian, which I thought was very expensive for uh, just a seal, but um, I guess that is what it is. And then uh, the synthetic, uh, you know, uh, I guess varies depending on what quality you get. I think this one was about $16 a bottle. Uh, again through my uh, local GM dealer. All right guys, I'm back from my trip yesterday. Was able to get to the ski hill and back uh, with the truck. Everything's good. I don't have any leaks and uh, very happy with the way the job turned out. Uh, and did wash the truck. Probably should have done that uh, before I started uh, wrenching on it. Uh, Would have made it a little bit easier and a little less dirt in the face, but uh, hey, uh, you live and learn. So two things I did realize looking back at some of the videos that are already online uh, on this particular job, most of them are for the early 2000 trucks. The axles look very, very similar, if not identical, uh, but there are two key differences. The later model trucks or the newer trucks, uh, sort of 2009, I believe, and up, uh, use a gasket between sort of that sort of stub axle and the, uh, the main housing, uh, whereas the early models just used a uh, anaerobic uh, sealant. And then um, also the newer trucks uh, also have a different uh, retaining clip on that sort of stub axle there. So if you follow the early model via, uh, earlier model uh, how-to videos, they show you just beating out the axle and the little retaining clip kind of dimpling in and just going out. Uh, if you try to do that on the newer trucks, uh, you're not going to get the axle out and you're going to end up bending C-clips and causing yourself all sorts of uh, frustration or that little retaining clip, not the C-clip, but the retaining clip. Um, 
because you do have to remove that retaining clip uh, and remove that washer before you can uh, remove the axle and the axle comes out very, very easily. So uh, be cautious of uh, watching some of those uh, older videos on older trucks. Uh, everything's gonna look the same and for the most part it is. There are just those key two key differences and one of those will cause you hours and hours of headache and damaged parts. So you guys may be asking, why would you line your back in your garage and do this job? Uh, the big thing is for me is saving a few dollars. Now I went to the dealership uh, to grab the parts and also asked the service department how much they were gonna charge to do this job. Now, uh, as far as book labor hours, it's 3.3 hours uh, if you've got the skid plate, um, which most, uh, most I believe do. Uh, it's like maybe 0.2 hours or 0.1 hours less if you don't have the skid plate on there. Uh, but at the labor rate that the local dealership was charging, that was going to be $470 Canadian plus tax just for the labor to do this job. It took me about five hours of messing around, rolling around on the floor. Again, I don't have a lift. I'm doing it with jack stands and a jack and rolling around on the ground. So uh, there is a little bit of that uh, extra time there as well as trying to figure out the job and figure out exactly how everything's going to, together as well as filming. So, um, you know, definitely something that's doable in a day uh, in your uh, home garage or even in your driveway. Uh, it's uh, not that bad of a job. But uh, for $470, I would much rather put that in my own pocket and save that rather than uh, head to the dealership and have them do the job for me. If you're still with me at this part of the video, thank you so much for watching to the end. Much appreciated. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit subscribe. It would help me out immensely. I've just crossed over the 500 subscriber boundary uh, this month. Very excited about that. And uh, I can't wait to get up to a thousand when I can finally get the channel monetized and start putting some of that uh, a few dollars a month I might make uh, back into some more camera gear and towards more uh, build projects and uh, that sort of thing to again share more on the platform and uh, so that would be much appreciated. If you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below. I will make sure to get back to you and help you out on your project as well. Till next time we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.